This is a drawing of my new four pole aluminum test rotor. The small circles are the locations for four neodymium magnets that are one quarter inch in diameter and one sixteenth of an inch thick. Note that three magnets have their south poles facing upwards and one has its north pole facing upwards. You can see that I have indicated top dead center to be 45 degrees ahead of the north magnet. I have since found that I need more time, so in practice I will set TDC 180 degrees ahead of top dead center. Now let me explain what is going on. In my last coil unplug video, I used this uh, two magnet rotor on my little uh, uh, engine simulator setup here. It was on a previous uh, video and uh, the whole idea was that I would use this pot to be able to run this uh, motor uh, with this uh, uh, two pole rotor to get start getting some coil on plug firing information and so on. So uh, at that time then um, I used one Arduino here to drive the uh, motor using an H-bridge here and then I used this other Arduino setup here with a an LCD over here to get the trigger pulse uh, using a uh, single US 5881 Hall effect sensor mounted on the inside of this can down here on this little brass slip here with wires coming out and hooking up to my circuit. And so I got some information off of that. Uh, the LCD recorded RPM, change in RPM, and then <clears throat> later on I actually I added a pot to the whole thing uh, and just uh, so that I could uh, look at uh, coil uh, saturation and charging time over here using a Audi coil on plug pack and a 12 volt battery and then uh, monitoring the coil saturation point here on the scope. Okay so now what I've done is to go to a four pole rotor instead and that's round here and you can see there are three red dots on here one two three and those are all uh, little tiny magnets with the south poles facing out and the fourth one that doesn't have a red dot is a fourth magnet with the uh, north pole facing out and these tiny little magnets I bought on eBay I bought a bunch of them 30 of them I think and a little tiny box like that and they're very very strong little magnets okay and so anyway I produced this uh, this rotor here the magnets are just sunk flush and the pockets were so precise that I, there wasn't much room for epoxy in there to hold them in place uh, so I just had to dab a little around the corners but then the reason that there's a little epoxy here is I kind of covered each magnet the, the edges are rounded a little bit with a little epoxy so hopefully there's a little epoxy to hold them in also of course they are in a pocket and there's a 16th inch rim here holding them in so they're probably not going to go any place but anyway there they are and then at some point in time I also added a strobe light here and I don't know if it has a lot of effect or not but anyway so I have the strobe light so now what I've done I've gotten rid of my my coffee can with the sensor inside and uh, I built a new uh, sensor assembly here and I hope you can get the general idea of what's going on but it's basically this block of wood right here and on the bottom side of it there are two hall sensors of this US 5881 which is a not a latching but it's uh, it's uh, one that just uh, 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 gives you a pulse when the south end of a magnet goes by. Uh, when the south end of a magnet goes by the branded side of the Hall effect sensor. I found out that if you put the north side of a magnet up against the branded side of this Hall effect sensor, nothing happens. However, if you take the north side of the magnet to the back side of the Hall effect sensor, it acts like the south side to the front. 
And so I wanted to test to see that that really would happen because what I'm after here is is a four minus one uh, ECU ignition setup, but I don't want to have to guess where the actual uh, uh, crank sensor uh, point would be. So I thought, well, okay, if I put a second Hall effect sensor uh, close to the other one upside down, then I can sense that magnet and that magnet will tell me, give me a reference for where top dead center is. And of course I could back that off from top dead center as long as I know exactly where it is, I know that. I can also use that fourth sensor to give me more accurate low speed RPM data. So I haven't done that yet programming, but I'm getting closer and closer to it. Now, so we go back to this block of wood right here. So. Uh, you probably can't see it at all, but epoxied to the bottom of that block of wood under this tape are the two sensors right under there. Okay, and so the way they're laid out is like this. So hopefully that will focus and you can see that the sensor on the right has the branded side up. The sensor on the left has the branded side down. And so they're tightly epoxied to the bottom of this piece of wood here. And then all I did was to take a little piece of a PC board and attach all the wires to it and uh, my 10K uh, pull-ups uh, and then uh, feed the wires to my Arduino Robo Red that I'm using right now. And, uh, and I have found that indeed uh, the darn thing works. So, let's take a look. Here's my current setup with the uh, four pole rotor, the three red dots. Here are three uh, south facing magnets, and without the dot is a north facing magnet. <laughs> Here's my uh, Arduino Robo Red setup and uh, uh, an I2C I uh, display. And if I rotate the rotor by hand, we can see that I'm counting RPMs, change of RPMs, and then the TR is my trigger pulse width. And I think you can probably see that. Each time we rotate the rotor one time around we get a spark. Sometimes you can see the sparks and sometimes you can't because of the frame rate of the camera. But at any rate, so, uh, I'm, so I'm counting the, uh, uh, on the right hand side, I'm counting the uh, turns of the north magnet and that really doesn't do much for me except to prove that the, uh, using the uh, north uh, magnet facing the back side of the Hall effect sensor works the same as facing the uh, magnet the south side toward the branded side of the Hall effect sensor. So this is a Robo Red that I recently got on sale. <coughs> it's kind of neat to have these uh, little sets of power ground and signal pins for each of the digital and analog uh, GPIO inputs. Now, of course, the next thing to do is to go on with uh, 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 building in adjustable uh, computer-controlled uh, advance mechanism. Now, one other thing that I wanted to show you is that I now, rather than using uh, any south magnet to just trigger the uh, coil. Uh, I'm actually using the three south magnets just for RPMs and I'm using the north magnet to fire the spark plug. So again this may be hard to see but I'm just going at uh, about 500 RPMs and you'll see some of these sparks and some you won't because of the frame rate of the camera I'm sure
So hopefully you can see and hear that frame rate a little bit. Here we have the uh, H-bridge circuit driving the little motor under here, but running the rotor and advancing the reading the RPMs, change in RPMs, and uh, counting the north trigger signals. And here's what the serial monitor sees.